Okay, thank you for making us the number one breakfast show in the country. Our next conversation will be about water, sanitation and hygiene in Uganda. Now, poor sanitation and hygiene is a cross-cutting health concern in all rural Ugandan villages. Poor sanitation leads to diarrhea diseases, which are responsible for 17%. Hear this, 17% of all children-related deaths under five. That's according to the World Health Organization. Poor personal and household hygiene can lead to trachoma, increased rate of infections, and a number of other diseases. Now, a home with standing water can become a breeding ground for mosquitoes and increase malaria rates, not just for the family, but for the neighbors as well. Now, to get to understand the health implications of this, we are now joined by Honorable Jane, um, uh, Jacqueline Amongin. She's the member of parliament for Ngora district and Jen Marcel. She's uh, Sembuche, she's the country director of Water Aid Uganda. On the extreme right, we have Robert Tim. He's the national uh, director Habitat for Humanity. Many thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. Let me start with you, Honorable uh, Amongin. Now, in 2015, you tabled this bill called Bulunji Bwansi. It was called the National Community Act, Works. National Community Works Bill in 2015. So you presented uh, this case in Parliament, and in 2016, it was approved by the Speaker. Tell us, why has the Bulunji Bwansi uh, bill taken long to flag off? Because the idea was the National Community Works Bill would ensure that uh, wa uh, wash activities take a cardinal position in the country. Now that this uh, bill hasn't taken off, where are we standing? Okay, just to uh, re echo what, on what you've asked, mm -hmm. uh, apparently the, the bill is on course mm -hmm. uh, because in 2016. I, with Honorable Mbwa and members of the Watch Forum, mm -hmm. tabled this bill in the in the House, and apparently the bill has to go through different stages. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate the fact that it was overwhelmingly we were given leave of absence because we brought leave leave to table that bill, and it's because uh, it was overwhelmingly supported by the whole House. Mm -hmm. It was in good faith. Mm -hmm. and the bill has to go through different stages. We tabled this bill as private members' bill. Mm -hmm. So if it is a private member's bill, you have to seek the leave of the house mm -hmm. to be able to, 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 to bring the bill to, 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 to be given permission to move on because those are the procedures of our rules mm -hmm. of parliament. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've, done the, we've done the research, we've done the uh, exchanges, we have, we have also benchmarked mm -hmm. other countries mm -hmm. which are doing well like Rwanda, mm -hmm. like uh, Singapore in terms of uh, hygiene and sanitation. Mm -hmm. Burundi one see whereby it's a commitment of everyone mm -hmm. to mind about their communities and their the the hygiene of their er, their areas. Mm -hmm. So that is the implication of that bill. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the the bill has, is with the legal council of parliament, and I'm sure soon we shall be presenting it to the house mm -hmm. again because it has to go through the different mm -hmm. stages of mm -hmm. parliamentary. Uh, procedures. So now that uh, this bill is currently non-existent, what is par uh, parliament doing to ensure that citizens have access to clean water, sanitation, and hygiene. Okay, you realize that sanitation, hygiene are very cross-cutting issues. Because it's not necessary that without that bill, of course, it, that would ha help to, to, to hype the mm -hmm. wash mm -hmm. issues within the country. Mm -hmm. But uh, wash issues are cross-cutting. We have wash in health, wash in education, wash in the, uh, water, Minister of Water. So it's a cross cutting issues in the different sectors. Mm -hmm. So apparently as members of parliament, or as champions in the wash in the in the parliament, our focus is we are always looking at what is the, what is what is the policy for example in place when it comes to education and health. We have also worked hard to ensure that the the, or the office of the Prime Minister, who is the leader of government business in Uganda, mm -hmm. coordinates all the wash activities because uh, Previously, it was it was like okay for us in the Ministry of Education, we're only dealing with education. Mm -hmm. So you find that sanitation issues are not given a lot of concern in that area. Mm -hmm. Ministry of Health would also say for us we are able to de deliver health services. So uh, it 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 became prudent that the the lead of government business had to call all these other sectors that are directly involved in the sanitation and hygiene situations in the country mm -hmm. to make sure that it's a, a harmonized and coordinated engagement. 
So in that way, it helps us also as members of parliament to engage in the different committees of education, health, in the parliament to ensure that WASH is given a lot of attention. Let me get to you, Ms. Jen Marcel Sembuche. You're the country director, Water Aid Uganda. Mm -hmm. Now, on October 11th, the Daily Monitor ran a story, a very, very contentious story about Kassen Zero Health Center 3 in Kakuto County, uh, Chotera District right there, that has spent six years without a latrine. Mm. And this is not the only case. It's not an isolated case. Even in some other areas in Uganda, we've seen this uh, scenario one too many times. Uh, what is causing this? Um, I think it is, it is a real great pleasure, Unike, right now for us all to be sitting here and discussing about Unike Wash and healthcare mm. facilities. Um, the case that you've highlighted, I think, is one of many, not only in Uganda and within the rural areas, but across many developing countries. Mm -hmm. As water aid, um, our focus, you know, is we have a vision of having everyone everywhere mm -hmm. by 2030 accessing safe water, sanitation and hygiene. And our plight for healthcare facilities around WASH began five so years ago in being able to highlight, you know, like some of the gaps that are within these areas. So the case that you've talked about, it's one of many. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for us, um, you know, like the good thing about it is that now it's the light is shining on this mm -hmm. and um, we're even more encouraged when we have you know, like parliamentarians focusing on issues such mm -hmm. as you know, like the gaps within healthcare facilities and also within schools because it has quite a lot of impact in terms of um, us even going to the vision of 2040. Mm -hmm. Um, the fact that many of our healthcare facilities lack not only toilets, but you find their studies have been done, and we've also done a, as water aid together with the Ministry of Health, KCCA, Makerere, and then um, uh, MRI University. <coughs> we did a study mm -hmm. earlier this year within Cam Greater Kampala in looking and assessing the situation of wash in healthcare facilities, and some of the results are really challenging and really shine a light on the areas that we need to be able to address. Mm -hmm. I would like to also highlight, you know, like by the fact that um, you know, like there's such a gap, and I think for, s for some time you know, like the light has not been shown, it is affecting many women who are pregnant and also mm -hmm. newborns. Mm -hmm. Because by the fact that you don't have these, these services within, within the healthcare facilities, and particularly in the rural areas, it brings about so many challenges, especially when, when women are delivering and when newborns are beginning their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it exposes them to infections. It also reduces you know, like, um, the ability probably for women to go into healthcare because you find some of them having to carry water. Mm -hmm. And you know, birthing is quite a messy business. Mm -hmm. If you don't have water, if you don't have the right facilities, it compromises on so many things. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm honestly excited mm -hmm. um, that so many United you know, parliamentarians are really pushing ahead yes. for this, as well as um, you know, like development partners, CSOs, mm -hmm. that are all going to be part of uh, a symposium on mm -hmm. the 15th. Yes. And um, because you know, like without a mother, without you know, like us giving birth, mm -hmm. how can the world Unite continue. It, it has a really big impact on, on Unite on human rights, Unite on the quality of life yes. in all aspects. And that symposium couldn't have come at the perfect time. On the 15th of November, four days after that, we'll be uh, holding, observing World Toilet yes. Day. So it couldn't have come yes. at the perfect moment. So let me just uh, engage Mr. Robert Tutim, the National Director for uh, National Director Habitat for Humanity, Uganda. Yes. Now, what she talked about lack of la latrines affecting mothers right there and their unborn children. Mm -hmm. Wait, what are some of the solutions to uh, about this problem? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, just to build on uh, <coughs> what my colleague has shared, mm -hmm. uh, the issue of uh, the focus of this symposium mm -hmm. ideally has two areas, mm -hmm. and that is a wash at the health facilities, mm -hmm. and then uh, wash in schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has articulated the issues that really the country is grappling with. Mm -hmm. And I also want to cite some of the, the studies that have been mm -hmm. done in the country. Mm -hmm. In this country, 14% of children die within the health centers before reaching home. Mm -hmm. In this nation still, we have about 74% mm -hmm. 
of the health facility still lacking the basic wash water hygiene and sanitation facilities. It's a very, very appalling development, very appalling team. Development. So what can and we do to avert these challenges? The government is already, yes. with the partners, have already played a, a, taken a great stride in terms of uh, providing these services at the health facilities. Mm -hmm. We know that the demand is so huge. And we know that uh, uh, it's an urgent case that needs to be addressed now. Mm -hmm. It calls for really a concerted and collective effort of all partners. And this symposium partly is one of the processes that we are taking as collective partners in this country mm -hmm. to see that we move to another level in terms of bringing everybody on board. A movement that will cause a paradigm shift in the way we focus and prioritize faci wash facilities mm -hmm. at the health centers mm -hmm. and, and schools. So it is a huge one that I may not be able to tell you that this is the roadmap in terms of solving mm -hmm. this. But, this but the political will is there to The go political ahead will this. is absolutely yes. there. So, uh, Mr. Robert, let me just head on to my next question. Uganda is in the process of developing the third national development plan, uh -huh. 2021 to 2025 which yes. aims at improving uh, household incomes for every Ugandan. Now, can the water sanitation and hygiene program drive national development? Absolutely. And that's a, that's a very, very, very important mm -hmm. question. Yes. And it's the central focus for the symposium. Mm -hmm. We feel that, of course, uh, uh, within the next five minutes, uh, it won't be sufficient for us to expound on for that real, question. For real. But I'll try to yes. uh, bring it from a high-level perspective. Mm -hmm. I want to start from the global level. Mm -hmm. You'll recall that uh, in uh, uh, September 2015, world leaders agreed to uh, realizing, they committed to realizing 17 goals. Mm. And among those 17 goals, we are happy that uh, WASH, Water Hygiene Sanitation, is among the first 10. Actually, it's number six. Mm -hmm. And these goals collectively seek to address the issue of poverty seek to address the issue of equality mm -hmm. and seek to address the issue of uh, our environment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I see that this symposium, mm -hmm. this, the theme of the symposium rightly suits because we see WASH as a foundation that uh, develops health, mm -hmm. a foundation for equity, a foundation for gender equality, mm -hmm. a foundation that will enable education. Mm -hmm. So ideally, when we look at uh, uh, wash mm -hmm. at the global level, mm -hmm. we see that it's more anchored mm -hmm. and the framework of the SDGs mm -hmm. is definitely prioritizes wash. Amazing, and, and amazing, Robert. I think we should leave it at that note and then I would like to engage Honorable Among and we are running out of time. Yeah. Honorable Among, what are the, some of the challenges um, impeding the activities of uh, the water sanitation and hygiene program? Okay, uh, I think one of the biggest challenges that uh, people see uh, it's sometimes the water, sani the sanitation, and uh, when we talk about water sanitation and hygiene, people really focus on water, yes, access to water, and they forget about uh, sanitation and hygiene part of it. Mm. So, in uh, it's important to bring all these uh, issues together, mm. which wash in in totality, mm. because uh, that that impedes our work. You find that sectors focus on their roles mm -hmm. rather than looking at how do how does it help us if we manage the sanitation mm -hmm. and hygiene in the country it would help us cut a huge cost on the health budget mm -hmm. so it's 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 still one of the biggest challenges that we have mm -hmm. and then of course as parliamentarians and as government there are many competing priorities mm -hmm. but for us as champions of wash we are saying no mm -hmm. besides all the other competing priorities we believe that wash is very key mm -hmm. and it is in the center mm -hmm. of it all mm -hmm. that's why you see as we are now in the budget cycle we are having a symposium and the the, the theme is very clear mm -hmm. Uh, how do we position water, sanitation, and hygiene as a driver for national mm -hmm. development and the role of parliament? Because mm -hmm. uh, it's basically parliament that does everything, mm -hmm. allocation of resources. We can even decide to reallocate from A to B. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at how do we reposition our, our and foc put our focus in water, sanitation, Underst and understood, hygiene. Understood, Honorable. Let me end with Ms. Jen. Uh, talk, tell us about some of the achievements of the WASH program as we wrap up um, since 2012. Okay, um, I think some of the key achievements, you know, like being able to interact, you know, like with the parliamentarians, mm -hmm. because you know, like, um, 
I see us, we're all on the same team. Yeah. In terms of we have these challenges, we have this goal, we need our people to be accessing these services, we need them to get. So I think the achievements that have been there have been uh, linked to unique the, the success within mm -hmm. schools, yeah. like uh, washing schools, there have been quite a number of activities linked around menstrual hygiene mm -hmm. management. There's been quite a lot of improvement around, um, you know, like the drop holes, but there's still a big gap. Mm -hmm. And then also the ability to channel, you know, like the necessary information to the parliamentarians mm -hmm. to be able to give them the facts and the evidence for them to be able to articulate. So there's still a big gap, but then we are moving in the right direction. Yes, definitely, definitely. There is still a big gap, also. but the positive positive thing is that we are all on the same team mm -hmm. and you know like, things can't happen you know like, straight away mm -hmm. but we can see the commitment the willingness to be able to move it forward and we still continue to call upon you know, like our parliamentarians and also all the duty bearers not only at the parliament level because it needs to come up right oh, from the district awesome Gemma. i'm afraid we'll yes. have to leave it at that uh, thank you for coming all of you robert jen and miss jacqueline among it well i hope that national works uh, community works uh, national Bill. community works bill yeah. comes into force because it's really pivotal when it comes to making sure that the wash program really takes off across the country yeah sure. yeah we're still watching morning at ntv right about now we're going to be joined by our reporter steven Mbide, who has the latest with regards to traffic on a